Now this, well, as you know by now, uh, U.S. Uh, increased tariffs uh, uh, went into effect at midnight against China. Now China is firing back. Joining us now, market watcher David Bonson. All right, David, uh, tell us, uh, describe to us the degree of the trade war, where we are right now with respect to, to this trade war, and if, if it's possible even now to, to see an end game right now. Well, I don't see exactly how the end game will play out, but I believe an end game is going to come. I'm more and more thinking, Charles, that where the president will get his uh, victory it will end up coming in some form of NAFTA renegotiation um, and possibly some deal with EU on the car imports. Um, I think that the China thing is digging deeper and deeper and it's becoming more problematic. Uh, I certainly agree we have a lot of leverage to hurt them. They have incredible leverage to hurt us. I don't see a winner coming out of the China side of it. Hopefully, cooler heads can prevail, give the president uh, appearance of a victory on a NAFTA renegotiation, and let us get past this trade and tariff stuff that is really uh, kind of holding back so much of the great stuff going on in the economy. You know, David, on, on that note, uh, China did come with an offer. We don't, it, there weren't any details attached to it of an increase of $70 billion of imports that they would accept. And, and I know that that's one big part of it, opening up that economy. Uh, another part, of course, is the IP uh, stuff, intellectual property. It feels to me, though, China wanting to move away from being an export-driven economy to a domestic-driven economy like America, that at some point they actually could find a way to lower tariffs to help that aim. Um, I think that there's some truth to that, but I don't believe China is looking to move away from being an export driven. I think they're looking to rebalance their portfolio, if you will, that they're looking to diversify the sources of economic activity. They've been in need of doing that for a long time. But I don't know that simply uh, dealing with the tariff side is going to do it. You're exactly right. Opening up more markets. The issue, though, is not that tariffs are keeping that. It's that China has been a very low-cost producer that has made them attractive as an exporter. I don't think anyone believes there's anything wrong with that. And I assure you, American consumers don't think there's anything wrong with that. So for China to meet their objectives, I just think it's a matter of figuring out the way that it can look right to both countries' leaders' constituencies for them to be able to do more trade together. A gross level of higher trade should be the priority, not the ratio of import-export. Ultimately, our economy grows when there's more trade taking place, period. Right. Okay, and the bottom line, I think, is President Trump says he, love, uh, he wants ultimately to, to that aim, lower tariffs, uh, free, fair trade, open markets on both sides. I want to switch gears here a little bit uh, because we know you've been very bullish on oil. Uh, the Saudi Aramco IPO now, uh, supposedly it was going to be the largest ever. Now there's a lot of speculation that it won't happen. Uh, now you're in companies like Chevron, Schlumberger, and I know you like these master limited partnerships. What's your take? Because oil had a nice rally here, but now it's starting to spin its wheels a little bit. Well, again, I mean, it's sitting here into the mid-70s, so it's actually been an incredible rally, far more than we would have even forecasted. And I, and I don't think that there's anything that could keep it from coming back into the 60s in the short term, but that's a meaningful double-digit move higher than where people had thought a high level was going to be. Um, and, and it's not being fed because of supply. It isn't that everyone is artificially decreased supply. Um, I, I, this is a demand story, Charles. This is about the strength of, of economic growth and that the global demand cannot be met by our supply capacity now in the next year, two years, three years. I don't believe for a second that the Aramco IPO is not going to happen. I think Saudi is in desperate need of accessing global capital markets for them to diversify their economy into the next generation or two. And I also don't believe that IPO can happen with oil in the mid-60s or lower. I think they want $70, $80 oil. But the key thing here, and I, I believe the president knows this and some of his tweets don't necessarily indicate so, but... The U.S. is driving this. This is not about OPEC. It's not about Saudi Arabia. We are the marginal producer, and we should be happy about that. And there's a lot of investment to be done around that story. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. The uh, fracking miracle has been remarkable. Uh, and to your point, uh, we don't necessarily have the infrastructure, certainly in the Permian. They even keep up with the, the remarkable, and that's helping these prices. David, have a great weekend, man, and we'll talk to you again next week. Yes, Charles. Thank you.